Okie doke. This is going to be kind of a preview on the basics of Flipgrid. When you go to your, um, you know, classroom.google.com and you move in to assignment C4, and you get there from going to, let's say, classwork. Okay, classwork, spring semester C4. You come down, a reminder, this is where you go. In, again, first period will be first period, third period will be third period. You click on that, it'll take you to your flip grid. You should already be added. <clears throat> Once you're there, you'll see something that looks a lot like this. You're going to see a topic. You're going to click on the topic and then go to actions and record a response. Okay, this will pop up. Hello, everyone. And you're going to click on options and record screen. Once you do that, it'll come up with this, start the screen recording, but it's going to add, hey, hey, handsome. Um, <laughs> you select your entire screen. I would suggest putting um, your, your uh, face up here. I think it's a better way to do things. And then you hit share. It'll count down, and you got to jump over to the assignment. This is me, for better or worse. Um, I grew up, and the connections I made as a baby, well, they were kind of few. If I was hungry, I cried. Wet, cry. Uncomfortable, cry. Hungry, cry again. The world was my body and my needs, nothing else. Connections were all made by my parents. My time before schooling was quite exciting, making connections all the time with the natural world and with the spoken and written word. My family valued those things quite well. Uh, the nuns at my Catholic school, however, they disagreed. They saw school as more important than learning, and it would impact the rest of my life. My family, in contrast, loved to connect to a wide variety of things. Baseball, swim parks, the zoo, reading and writing together. These became almost religious acts for my family. Funny, though, I could always, easily get bribed by ice cream and bubbles. Some things never change. Um, we'd go to many places to experience our lives together and to learn how we felt about these things. We would talk constantly about these. Music, television, and, uh, and movies would help us bond together as a family. But as I grew older, I started to notice things about my community. New Mexico is a gun-toting, always changing, but yet never not being New Mexico kind of place. I think huge social change will start from here, and I think it will spread throughout the entire planet. In fact, I think it must. As I grew up, my interests slowly became 100% my own. I was increasingly interested in both the beauty and the brutality of everyday experience and knew my family was luckier than most because we didn't see the brutal world in our own home. And for that, I am thankful, Mom and Dad. Everywhere I looked, I saw a diversity, but I didn't see difference. I saw many strings woven together to build a beautiful, powerfully human culture. Our unity as a nation came from our diversity. And our culture here in New Mexico? Well, it was, is, and will forever be ancient. Our deep roots allow us to weather the greatest changes and storms of our present. We New Mexicans have been shaped by our survival since its beginning. The diversity on the left that we see is rich, full of life and connection. The lack of diversity on the right is a sign of disconnection, something I have trouble to this day understanding or accepting. Politicians are a huge part of this. They tend to push us into the red or the blue, the Republican or Democrat. And what I see is that too many people are dying from the struggle because too few people own near everything. Politics is a necessary but unpleasant act that we must participate in, like washing your hands, wearing a mask, or cleaning your butt. So, those who need the most should get the most so they can thrive in this world, and those who need the least should get the very least from this planet because they've already taken so very much from so many for so few. Um pieces of effort. Our politics are based in division and not diversity, and the prettiest people stand up and make promises they cannot possibly keep. They keep getting away with it because we are not afraid of them, nor are we unified. We should be voting against them, but we don't because we fight and bicker over tribe. Today, we're unified in our blindness, though, our lives mediated by screens. We unify behind the wrong things instead of unifying behind our diversity. And you can be an individual in America just as long as you're an individual identical to the rest of 
the other unique individuals. If tomorrow is to exist at all for us, it has to be one based in biological, cultural, and class diversity, and it must be based in equity. Those who need the most get the most. Those who need the least get the least. This has been a tiny picture of me. I hope you get the picture. Nah.